This is my steampunk rocket mass heater of science. This is the one we've done the most experiments with. It's a, it's a pebble style system. Uh, so then there's uh, uh, the, the duct does a double loop-de-loop -loop through this mass and then connects with this vertical pipe. And then we can route it out the wall very low or here or through the roof to see which way it works best. We have an optional uh, external air intake to determine how well that works. And we've got this. I'm not sure. And then this is the bypass. And so we can determine whether or not the exhaust is forced to go through the mass or if it bypasses the mass and goes directly to the exhaust system. So with a rocket mass heater, the wood goes inside here. So you put your sticks like this, the fire will burn sideways, and then it will come up inside of a riser that's inside of the barrel. It'll hit the top, put out the most heat up here, and then the exhaust will be pushed down the sides of the barrel, collected in the manifold down here, and then routed through the mass. Well, and about how much wood do you think you burn in the winter on an average cold day? Like, let's say it's 20 degrees outside and it never got above freezing. First, I gotta say that one load of wood is about this much. That's all it will hold. And then I might run a fire for, on a day like that, I might run a fire for an hour and a half. And then I'll be very comfortable in here. Um, and then it's possible that sometimes, because like, while if you look up, you'll see that this building has a lot of this crappy insulation in it. It doesn't have a ceiling. And then just on the other side of this insulation is an attic space, which is entirely open to the outside. So what happens is, is that any of the uh, convective heat, any of the heated air in the room, just leaves. It just, it's just gone. And it's constantly cooling this mass, you know, sucking all the heat out and just taking it right outside. So I think that um, in this particular building, if it had a ceiling, and like right now with some of the modifications that have been done to spots, I can like uh, look outside. Yeah, I can see outside light right through there. And I think there's a spot around in this I could see outside. But there's all these little spots where you can kind of see outside through the walls and stuff. So it's like this, this, this building needs to be finished. It's an unfinished building. Um, and if the building were finished, then I think that we could probably get by with using uh, a third of the wood or half of the wood. But even with the unfinished building, we'll still heat this space with much less wood than if we used a conventional wood stove. Right. Um, the important, I mean, that would be a good one to talk about for inside the Fisher Price house, because that's a well insulated space. And then the amount of wood we use there is so tiny. This one is all about like experimenting. We have made so many modifications to this. But the whole thing was designed to be able to be very easy to make modifications to and experiment with things. Um, I mean, with a rocket mass heater, a lot of people are kind of talking about like, you need to have an external air intake. And what we learned is, is that I do not like the external air intake. I'm against it. I, I don't want to ever try and do an external air intake again. But here in the North, I mean, not only is it code, but most people who live in the North, that's what they want to do. They want to, um, uh, make sure that the rocket mass heater has an external air intake. And I want to suggest to them, don't bother, don't do it. I, I think it's, I think it's a bad idea. Um, if nothing else, I mean, I could probably talk about just the external air intake for half an hour, but if nothing else, um, I sort of feel like there got to be a tang in the air from running the rocket mm -hmm. mass heater and, um, I didn't like it. And, and so, um, Whereas if I have it pull air from the room, 
then I get always fresh air in the room and then the fire goes out and stops and then heat coming off from the mass. No fire is being burned but I'm still being kept warm by the mass. And uh, I kind of like that. In fact it's kind of funny because like a lot of homes will have something where um, they'll be the, the house will be very sealed and they'll have an external air intake uh, um, for their wood stove. And they'll also have gone through the house and poked holes in the walls and they'll have a fan running in order to pull fresh air from outside because they found that if people just get in these Ziploc bag houses and they don't have an air exchange that they'll get really sick and all kinds of badness will go down. And so then uh, they have to have a fan, an electric fan running to do an air exchange. So I'm kind of thinking like, well, why not just run your wood stove pulling air from the room? And then people are like thinking, oh no, it's going to pull all the warm air out of the room. And um, inside the house, I can see how, if you're going to hold all, you got your Ziploc bag to hold all the warm air in, but you don't have an air exchange going on for your own personal breathing, that's a bit of a problem. In this particular structure, it's like not a problem. You're going to have air exchange all the time, whether you want it or not, until the building's done. Um, <clears throat> but I, I kind of feel like even inside of a house that's fairly well sealed, I want to pull the stinky air from the room, take it outside somehow, and this is a way of doing it without electricity. Mm -hmm. And then I have fresher air in the house, and then um, at the same time when the fire ends, then I'm going to heat the air that remains. So I think that the external air intake, I'm going to, I'm going to personally vote no on the external air intake. Um, here we've got a, what we call, I call it a guillotine. We've got another one over there. Um, we've got the ability to uh, close this. And so then um, uh, the idea was, is that um, if we close this one and open this one, then we can test running it out the wall. And uh, we can close this one and open this one and test going out the roof. And then the middle one, we just got plugged with a bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was for testing. Um, but when the fire is all out, it's totally out, you could close this and thus close all of them. And then it holds heat in better. And what we found is, is that this combined with this, it does help with efficiency. So this was actually designed with the idea that when you're starting the fire, maybe you want a really strong draw and you'll route it directly to the exhaust rather than making you do the double loop-de-loop -loop through the mass before going out. And we found that it does make a difference, but it's like 4%. It's not enough to really do that. So not going to do that anymore. But <clears throat> when the fire gets down to just a few coals, then what we did was we would activate this bypass so that way when the uh, um, exhaust is being pulled through the system and it's continuing to go through then uh, if we forget about it from that point then um, it's it's pulling this short path and not pulling through the mass so it's not taking uh, the warm air of the mass outside so with this and this we did double the efficiency of this rocket mass heater, which I think was a pretty huge feat, but... But is it necessary? It was already pretty efficient. But, well, yeah, it was already pretty efficient, but here's what happened, is uh, human discipline steps in, and people really don't have human discipline. Even though it's got the word human right in it, it's kind of like an oxymoron, human discipline. And so what happened was is that somebody would come along and try and start a fire, but this thing would be closed. And in about two or three minutes, it would start to smoke would start to come out of this because this was closed. Um, and other, t other times people would like build a fire and when the fire would um, go out, suddenly the room would start to get really cold. It's because the bypass was activated. And so then the, the mass never got heated up. So all of the extra heat just went right out the chimney. So basically what I'm thinking is, is like, okay, don't build anything with a bypass. Don't build anything with um, a guillotine on it. And don't build an external air intake. So basically... Keep it simple. Keep it simple, and you'll have the best system. 
because and and even what you've done isn't that that complicated it's only as complicated as a normal wood stove you've just got almost exactly the same little little knobs and whistles as you would if you had a wood stove but what what's what's the necessity if it's already efficient it's i mean it's cool as long as you pay attention to the fact that now it has bells and whistles well of course the functionality of all this is to experiment mm -hmm. let's find out let's discover and so we did the experiments and what we learned is the simplest solution is the best solution right these these things served a function and they did help us with these tests but in the end nah don't yeah. don't, don't do this yeah don't do what we did